All right, continuing more digital inking. So is blob brush really that different than working within Photoshop? No, nope. it's basically the same thing. I just like the control this gives me a little bit better. And I like having it as a vector right from the beginning. Now, because they're all vectors too, I can also do things like this. I can just delete ones. I can also just move them. <laughs> And I can modify, and I can stretch individual pet without ever like losing the quality of the resolution. So there's lots of reasons to to like a vector program. I can even do things like this. I can select something. I can copy and paste it. I can rotate it. We're going to do colors next class after. After we all have our, our line art. I'll be right there. So I'm stealing elements from other places. I can copy them. I can flip them using transform and reflect. I can just do all kinds of things. Right, with vectors. So vectors, quite nice. And these are not strokes. These are all fill paths. No stroke, all fill. Okay, but I was working on the saddle. And these, the weird kind of looping cords. And this is from kind of ceremonial uh, samurai art and stuff where they'll have like ropes shown as these big masses around their horses. So this is combining a lot of different stylistic references. Just do what you need to do to have fun with it. No stroke means that it has a red bar through it, like that. You want it to be no stroke and then just filled here. So this is your fill path, that's your stroke. The red bar through it means it's empty, there's nothing there. And that's what you want. No, Photoshop doesn't have strokes. Photoshop has foreground and background color there instead. Now, I just did a beautiful stroke, but that might be too, or a beautiful, you know, brush of my ink. But I think it's too thick, so i got to redo it. Annoying. No, because you don't need to be obsessive about it. It's, it's worth being obsessive when it's a, a logo. Right when it's just a few basic shapes, but this is going to be colored as well, and there's going to be so many things to look at. Not every edge needs to be perfect, but it's nice to know that you have the tools that you could make it that way. And it's tempting to try, but and the more you do it, the more you're practicing, you know. But so whatever is practical for you. Now, clean curves like this is honestly one of the, just the hardest things to ink. And I remember doing a lot of editorial cartoons. And whenever you have to do a speech bubble, you have to do kind of clean curves with ink. And it's, it's tricky. So Illustrator makes that a lot easier. Especially with those smooth options turned on. So I say take advantage of the tools. And then those of you who are taking drawing, enjoy drawing on your own, all of that translates to help you with this.
working traditionally can help you with your digital skills and vice versa. It's all related. <laughs> long time I think everyone draws starting at a young age you just kind of lose interest in it It does. You have the ability. Well, I have mine set so it's always the same width. I don't have mine set on variable. So that's called fixed versus pressure sensitive. And I started with pressure sensitive because that's what I thought I wanted. But I kind of, with all this detail, it was kind of nice to always have it be the same thickness. So they're just settings. And then in PhotoP, it's like the smoothness setting you have. It will straighten your lines out for you as you go. So even though my hand tends to be kind of jittery, I have it set towards more smooth, and that helps. So it's just setting the tools in the way that, that helps you. Yeah, question. Do you have where you have different like, uh, lines? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm more used to um, print comics and cartoons than I am to animation. For animation, I just like to do concept designs, but I don't like to do any finished frames because I find it tedious. So usually I would make this variable thickness, but I kind of like these as animation designs. So that's why I have it locked. But whatever you think looks better for your idea. So do you see the eraser tool in the toolbar? That's your white brush. And you can set that the same way you can set your paintbrush. That's true in Photoshop. That's not true in Illustrator. Uh, so annoying. So sometimes you are going to have to take your smoothness down to get certain sensitivity of angle. There we go. When you have to do kind of tight corners, sometimes the smoothness can get in the way. Okay, we have about 10 more minutes. Get as much inking done as we can. A little belt buckle. And I want to show the strap kind of coming off like this.
All right. Yeah, if it would be great if you could put all of your sketches in Canvas once you know the direction you're going. And then next, beginning of next class, I'll show you how we save the vector line art and put that into Canvas as well. It's a lot like how we did our black logos. Next class, that's when we'll put our, our line art into Canvas. And then we'll start coloring. Yeah, so our goal is to finish line art for next class. And if you want to be super ambitious, just give yourself time to do it. So making progress here. The back. Yep. So did you keep our little slips or Yeah, I don't need those back. Try to post your sketch today. That would be good. And then I'll show you how to post your line art at the beginning of next class on Wednesday. And have good, good Halloweens. Absolutely. Nice work. How's it going, Carl? You too. Take care, Ridden. So you want to just save your sketch as a JPEG and, and put it up to Canvas. Okay. Save the inking that you're working on just as a PSD to keep it in its layers if you're in Photoshop. And if you're an Illustrator, just save it as a, an AI file. Okay, so okay. Yes, so we're just keeping it in working file format as we're working on it. And I'll show you at the beginning of next class how to, what we do with that vector line art. Now those of you who want to ink it by hand, just bring in your, either get a really good scan of it, or take a really good photo of it, inked by hand and bring that in and we'll review how to image trace it into Illustrator into vectors. Because that's an important skill to know. Well, then the challenge is, whatever you get, you can turn it into something you like. 